This is a Hollywood fairy tale. The one where a struggling actress is plucked from obscurity and overnight becomes a huge star. It's the story that our own Margot Robbie is living right now. In just a few short years, she's gone from a regular spot on Neighbours to plum rolls alongside some of Hollywood's leading stars. Her latest is as Jane in the new Legend of Tarzan movie. As Denham Hitchcock discovered, despite Margot's sudden success, she hasn't strayed too far from her roots as a surfer girl from the Gold Coast. Young, talented, genetically blessed. Margot Robbie has Hollywood at her feet. You are a woman in demand. It's very busy right now. But she is as refreshingly real. Hmm? Shall I take it to you? Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to scroll the last bit. And homegrown <laughs> as they come. Are you used to the uh, entourage that comes with you these days? It's so nice to not do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd look like shit on the Do I have food in my teeth? No. Okay, thanks. You've been watching any of the football? Do you catch up with any stuff at home? State I, of origin? Yes, yeah, state of origin, always. One and two back to back. Queensland girl, huh? Queensland girl. Oh, mm, shit. Don't talk to me about it. This is going to be awkward. This could be very awkward. We're not friends. No. And you must hate me right now. This might be a hostile interview. This is going to be, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm on guard. Kiwi, 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 you better come check this and check out. Forget the state. Margot Robbie is representing the country. Hi. Naomi. Nice to meet you. Naomi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We've got an awesome place here. Hollywood is in love with our girl from Queensland. Here's Margot Robbie in a bubble bath to explain. And it's easy to see why. From now on, it's going to be nothing but short, short skirts around the house. Yeah, mommy. Yeah. But no touching. Oh, gosh. Do you read a lot of things that are written about you? No, not anymore. I've got some favourites. Oh, great. All right. It's nice. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. The Marilyn Monroe, the Grace Kelly of the modern era, the blonde bombshell of our times, a Disney princess sprung to life. And, <laughs> really? And this is my favourite. Seemingly computer-generated perfection of young womanhood. Wow. Not bad, huh? Well, they clearly haven't met me in person, but that is... Thank you for the ego boost for the day. That is exceptionally <laughs> kind. So how'd the whole acting thing begin? Who do we have to thank? Um, so my best friend, Christian Radford, we've been best friends since we were born, and he told me about this, like, little indie film that was filming on the Gold Coast and he was going to be in it. Can you that somewhere else? Hello? It's called Stalking. And he was like, you should do an audition because they, they need a chick character in it. And uh, so if it wasn't for him, none of this would have happened. <laughs> do what you want. I'm not going to waste my time sitting around here. I'm going for a swim. The movie, called ICU, was a low-budget thriller, but 17-year-old Margot was hooked. So she packed her bags and followed the well-worn path to Ramsey Street. Fifteen. Fifteen thousand. Nope, just fifteen. That's lame. Hey, shut at you. Everyone's got to start somewhere. You could have ground out an easy 30 years on Neighbours. Why risk it in Hollywood? I didn't want to play the same role for too long of a time mm. because I could already tell within myself that I was starting to play myself a little bit and mm. I didn't think I was really going to grow as an actor if I just started reacting the way I would in real life. So I wanted to go to America because there was just more opportunity. Sweet. 70 Apple, take three. Her big break would be in the Big Apple. This is the greatest she had been in the US for little more than a year when her agent sent her to audition for The Wolf of Wall Street. To her surprise, Margot found herself alongside Leonardo DiCaprio. I heard that during the reading for Wolf of Wall Street, you basically assaulted one of the premier actors of our time. I 
thought I was going to get arrested. <laughs> I was like, that's not okay. That was the dumbest thing you've ever done. You're going to jail now or getting sued. And I, what are you going to do? You're an idiot. What um, happened? We were doing a scene and we were improvising and I got a bit caught up in the moment and it wasn't scripted. But, you know, I was screaming at him and, and then I, um, I hit him in the face <laughs> instead of just saying a line, which I'm sure would have been good enough, but I, I took it a step too far. And and then, of course, as soon as I'd done that, I was swiftly taken out of the scene and thought, oh, my gosh, what have you just done? But um, they were, him and Marty were like, that was great. You should do that again. <laughs> is that something you do in auditions I always hit my co-stars, now? yes. That is, that is how I've gotten all my jobs. Mm. Why don't you light a fire or something and I'll be right out? Yeah, fire? Yeah, sure. You burn it there. Your character on Wolf of Wall Street spends a lot of time without clothes on. What is the last thing that you tell yourself before you drop your robe and walk onto you, the scene? And it's naked? not just with like doing a naked scene, but any scene where you feel like you're gonna make a fool of yourself. Wake up, you piece of shit! I just say like, you gotta go all out. Like you need to fully commit to this because yeah. if you half-ass it, it will look so stupid. Like but if you do it with complete conviction, oftentimes you can pull yeah. it off. So just try to do it with total conviction. Come on, give me a kiss. You look so beautiful right now. Come on. Kiss you? You look so beautiful. Kiss right you? Right. Yeah, give me one. Kiss. Uh, presumably you watched the film at home with family. How did it go down? Uh, I, uh, it was a bit odd. Um, we did like a, yeah, it had like a screening. I didn't really think it through and, and suddenly I was like sitting there and I was like, oh my God, like my my brother's there, and I'm like, this is going to be so weird. And after the screening, it was cool with, like, most family members, but my older brother, Lachlan, afterwards we kind of, like, he had, like, the world's most awkward conversation. <laughs> he was like, he was like, all right. Like, he, he tried to say congratulations, and I was like, ah, and we, like, tried to hug it out, but it was just so weird that I was just like, you know what, we don't have to talk for a couple of days now. And he's like, cool, see you later, and just, like, walked out. And then we never spoke of it again. I'm an older brother with two sisters, so right, I, I so feel for Lachlan. He's a, yeah, he handled it very well. <laughs> I act much better than I ever expected. That movie changed everything. Overnight, Margot became a wanted commodity and the roles came rolling in. Jess. Nikki. Focus with Will Smith. Hey, you need to put some clothes on. Excuse me? There's Australian people here. What is that supposed to mean? Grenade down there! Into a war zone with Tina Fey. In New York, you're like six, seven. Here, you're nine. Borderline ten. What are you here, like a 15? Hello, hello. Yeah. Huh. She's been the last woman on Earth. Hi, boys. And the last one the you'd want to mess with. What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what they really said. The much anticipated Suicide Squad will send her into supervillain folklore. What? And if all that isn't enough, she's currently promoting a remake of a classic, Tarzan. When I heard you were playing Jane in a Tarzan movie, I thought, no, this is not a role for Margot, but Jane is no damsel in distress, is she? Yeah, no, it was fun. I really liked their take on her, and it's definitely meant to be um, a modern retelling of a well-known story. I need you to scream for me. <sighs> like a damsel. They said, we well, hear yeah, this Margot Robbie's quite good. Why don't you meet her? <laughs> and I thought, and I looked at her picture and I thought, boy, she's gorgeous. But you know, will she be feisty? She just looks right, re a beautiful actress. I need someone who's got real balls, frankly. Mm. And then uh, I meet Margot and I go, it's Jane, that's Jane. And we often joke that maybe Tarzan actually needed saving rather than she needed saving. <laughs> I was excited to work with animals and Margot Robbie. I love the order that you put that in. Thanks <laughs> yeah. so much. Well, I met Margo before Wolf of Wall Street came out, mm. um, and she was so down to earth, so much fun, so easygoing. We had a great chemistry from the moment we met. The entire movie, you got your clothes on, and your co-star is oh, semi-naked. Role reversal. <laughs> so nice. It's the best. I could eat anything. 
and he was <laughs> suffering. At first I was like, now you know how actresses feel. And then I, I did just feel really bad for him and I was like, I'm sorry, I'll go eat my muffin somewhere else because you, you are about to cry. And You're I rubbing feel, it I in. feel really bad for you. <laughs> the roles that you're choosing, they're very strong female roles. Is this the woman you want to be or the woman you are? Um, I would like to be a strong woman. I don't always feel it, for sure. Seriously, the hell's wrong with you people? We're bad guys. It's what we do. How much of that strength did you get from mum? From my mum? Mm. She's, yeah, she's like, she's amazing. She's a very um, emotionally strong woman. Mm. Well, single mum raising four kids in single Queensland, mom. it's not easy. No, no, definitely not. Did you make it easy or hard for her? And we made it as hard as possible. <laughs> like, we couldn't have been worse-behaved children. We There was four of us, and we were all just, like, fighting all the time, and she was working, and, like, I, it would just would have been... Like, I, mm. I truly don't know how she did it. There's a lot of photos of you out there, but there's one in particular that's my absolute favourite, and it's you and your mum with champagne in your hand standing in front of a house in Queensland. Oh, really? Tell me what's happening in that photo. I just... I told my mum that I'd paid her mortgage, so... Yeah, that was something like when I first started working and I, um, you know, started making money. I was like uh, speaking with a business manager and they said, you know, you should invest your money. What do you want to do with your money? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, first thing, I want to I want to pay off my mum's mortgage. And they said, OK, well, it's going to be a long time before you can afford to do that. But, you know, that's what we'll work towards. So every couple of months I check in and I'll be like, do we have enough yet? And he's like, no, not yet. Do we have enough yet? No, not yet. <laughs> and then eventually he was like, you can afford to pay mum's mortgage now. And so I was like, great. Did all the paperwork and stuff. And yeah, it was like a big secret to be like sitting on for so long. And um, but yeah, it was definitely one of the best moments of my life. What a fabulous thing to be able to do. It was, yeah. Mm. It's like when any kid dreams of being able to do for your parent. Yeah. Like you, you just, I feel very lucky that I actually had the opportunity to do that. There's another photo you have to explain to me because it looks like you are giving someone a tattoo. Yes, probably. Yes, I probably was. This is legit? It's a legit photo? Yes, it's a legit photo. <laughs> There's been many victims to the tattoo gun. How many? Uh, almost 50. Oh. 50. Yeah. This is like you would a, think this... I would have gotten better by now, but I really haven't. In this fact, like a... I may be getting worse at them. What's the worst one you've done? I spelt one wrong. That's Ooh. definitely the worst. You spelt a word wrong? I spelt a word wrong. Okay. What no was... going back from that, really. <laughs> what was the word? Uh, we were doing squad tattoos, so we were tattooing squad on everyone. Um, but we were spelling it S-K-W-A-D, yeah. like squad, because that's how we always said it yeah. throughout the shoot for some reason. And so I went straight from the S to the um, W, and I forgot the K. Ah, SWAD. SWAD. SWAD, that's not I was, good. I was throwing out suggestions. I was like, if you could write, like, <laughs> swag or sweet. And he was like, I don't want swag on my arm. And I was like, I, I hear you. I wouldn't either. But So we put a line through it and then wrote it properly underneath. <laughs> oh, that made it all better. Yeah. It's a funny story. Now, the night we go to air is your birthday. Really? Oh, this cool. Is, so it's your birthday. Now, Thanks. what gentleman would turn up without a birthday present? So this is for you. Happy birthday. This looks a lot... <laughs> this looks a lot like my tattoo gun set. Oh, oh! My God! Are you serious? Happy birthday. Holy shit! <laughs> That's an amazing gift. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Don't encourage her, man. Don't encourage her. Please don't. Too late. We gave her a whole kit for her oh birthday. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> she loves it, and she's terrible at it. So you escaped without a Margot tattoo? I did. I mean, so far, so good. We'll see for, for how long. But now that she's walking around this very hotel with a box with a tattoo gun, uh, yeah, I'll end up with something on my face. Thank you very Margot. much. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sophia's over there like, oh, my God, the last thing we need is more tattoo guns. <laughs> it's a very big year for Margot. Her new film, The Legend of Tarzan, is in theatres from Thursday. And on August 4, Margot will be back starring in Suicide Squad. On the Sunday Night Facebook page and website, we have more on Margot and her movies.